One day I'm not gonna need a car, let me tell you. It's kind of like a little jewel box that was found in the attic of a magical old home in the 1800s, I'd say. Yeah, I'm Nick Alcaraz, and welcome to my handmade home in Burbank, California. I'm a food artist, a DIY artist, and a content creator. I make short form videos on TikTok and Instagram, and in the videos, it's all peculiar things that are being created, whether it's DIY or food. I'm obsessed with dark and creepy things, and so that bleeds into my art, which bleeds into my life. And so my house is a direct reflection of what I love. So I wanna start with this oil painting of a landscape. This was actually just $20, but it's really the inspiration for the whole living space. These are a lot of vintage frames and they're from the thrift store. They don't cost much, but when you put them all together, it makes, makes it look expensive looking. It, it's a big impact on the space. And in this uh, living space, it's actually a mixture of like Victorian, fairy tale, and mid-century. What attracts me to this moody Victorian style is because I see it in a lot of horror movies and I love horror movies. I love Halloween. Ever since I was a kid, I was just always attracted to things like that. Living in a space that someone like Dorian Gray would live in is really cool. Because outside in LA, it's a big scary place already. Coming home to this little storybook safe haven is, is quite nice. I have this pole lamp, which is my favorite lamp. Um, I splurged on this one, of course. But it's so cool because it just, it's attached from the bottom to the top of the ceiling. And it doesn't take up any space at all. And I think it goes with the Victorian mid-century vibe because these cuts are very mid-century, but the lamp shapes are very Victorian. In this space, we combine Victorian with French country, with cottage core and also mid-century modern and a lot of designers probably wouldn't put all those things together but we're kind of in the business of living in a space that we love so why not when i moved in this place had the renters special so all of the light switches were kind of painted over and the windows kind of had that thick paint and everything was boring renter's white color and I wanted to change that as soon as possible so I darkened everything. So you'll find more plants all the way around the area, um, all the way into the dining room. They're connected, the living space and the dining space are connected, but with rugs you can make everything feel separate. Um, so this is the dining space and here um, I love to entertain with my partner and our families. So one of my favorite things is this spiderweb lamp, which is a thrift store find. It was only $8. It's just amazing. It's just chef's kiss. What made me want to move into this space was the bay window. Um, a lot of apartments here in Los Angeles are cookie cutter and just that little bit of architecture of the bay window Oh, I really wanted to live there because of it. The proudest DIY moment that I have are my curtains. These curtains that I made, um, and I dyed them, there are IKEA curtain panels, and I sewed them uh, using a vintage sewing pattern. Um, I really wanted to bring in that Victorian feel, and this really frames this huge bay window. And I'm in love with it. I love getting up in the morning and feeling like I'm in a castle. <laughs> My favorite piece in the home um, is this green dishware. Um, this dishware is called Jadeite. And uh, it's actually like really rare now, but it started in the 30s. It was like during the Great Depression, um, it was very cheap. It was like in hospitals and you could even find things like this in cereal boxes back then. I collect it piece by piece, uh, but whenever I have a little extra to splurge, I love to go on eBay and buy some jadeite. <laughs> so this is a quick thing that I uh, put together, just a little peculiar tea time, I'd say. Uh, so here you would see that I put some marzipan maggots 
in this cake. Ladybug Caprizis. These are just like an Oreo truffle. You know, I, I love doing all kinds of different types of art. So one thing that I've done is I crocheted this doily. The pattern's called Postmortem. And I just thought that was really cool and go to, it goes well with the, the whole tea thing. This really embodies a lot of the work I do. It's, um, it's like Halloween 365 days of the year. This table is something that we Frankenstein together. We wanted marble. So we found a table really cheap that had a stone granite marble-ish top. And then we found this really cool magical wood base. And it is attached with liquid nails and it's not going anywhere. It hasn't moved. Here's another really cool piece that I love in this space. This is a mantle that was given to us. These corners were not here. They were all just thrashed. So with Bondo, I built them up and I just painted all black to fit that nice moody vibe. My partner tiled all of the inside of it. This wasn't part of the original structure. So another thing that we thrifted that really helps the space is this huge mirror. This mirror was nearly free. It was hard to transport, but once we got it here, uh, we stuck it on the wall and it really opens up the space. So I love the dining room space and this just doubles that dining room space. It's a great mirror. Now I'm gonna show you my apothecary cabinet. So this is where we store all of our crafts. I can't take credit for this amazing idea, but I did assist in building this. So it's basically a bunch of random drawers that we shoved inside this, what was once a coat closet uh, to store all of our crafts. So in here I have all my clay tools and glue and everything that I need to do what I do. But we also added this um, faux stained glass window up in this cubby space. So behind this, we actually store our toilet paper and <laughs> paper towel, but that's not pretty to look at. So with plexiglass and a decal and a light, um, we just pop this up there and it looks like it's always supposed to be like this. I collect rulers from antique shops or thrift shops, wherever there's an old ruler, I love it. Rulers rule. And up here we have the ghost bell. So this is our little hallway and we painted it all one color so it can feel like a little narrow alley. But we added this um, gallery wall that goes all the way up. And there are some special things on this gallery wall. And one of the most special things is this Victorian house painting. Living in your vision board is something that I think everybody should do. And this is the image of the outside that I wish this house would look like. And one day I will definitely have that house. Um, here we have this Picasso painting that it's not actually a painting at all. It was a print board that was a couple dollars at the thrift store, of course. And I took some matte medium and just brushed brush strokes on it to make it look like a painting. I did that as well with this scream painting and it makes the paintings look almost real. I was um, the winner of a craft competition and this is my grand prize trophy. I have nowhere to put it so I just put it on the floor in the hallway but I think it looks pretty cool there. Now on to the bedroom. This is the plaid haven. Um, my partner and I wallpapered these walls um, and everything in here has some kind of plaid pattern. We wanted this uh, space to feel like a magical preppy English dormitory. Um, so as you can see the floor is plaid, well the carpet's plaid, the bedding's plaid, and the huge wall behind the bed is plaid and they're all different plaids but they all go together because the same colors are in like each of the patterns. This is our bookshelf. There's not a lot of books, maybe just on the bottom. And we turn them all backwards so that color-wise, they'll cohesively go with the room. These boxes right here are actually the inspiration for the paint color in the room. And 
It's such an interesting color for a room, but it makes it really cozy. Paint colors don't necessarily have to come from just a swatch. You can pick something around your home and take it to the paint store and they can actually color match it. Here I have another award. We have a little greenhouse section that we like to look at of plants and crystal balls. You will find a lot of magical things the closer you look. And one of my favorite ones are these hand tie backs for our curtains. Uh, basically they're just wooden hands we stained and attached them to the wall. It's a subtle touch, but the, like I said, the closer you look, the weirder it gets. I have this little beetle that I found at a flea market, The Witches of Salem and the Magic Garden Fairy Tale book. What makes a home feel like home to me is having things that are passed down from generation to generation. So one of my favorite things in this room is this magical orange lamp that was given to me by my grandmother uh, when I moved to Los Angeles. Um, she's not with us anymore, but every time I light this candle, I feel like she's around. So I like to keep it in the room and light it during special times, especially her birthday or when I'm decorating for Halloween or any other holiday. I've always been creative since I was six years old. I picked up anything that I can to create and the person that I create with is my grandma who also loved Halloween and loved witches. So everything that I do now is kind of brought on by her influence. I would begin with like box cake mixes and I would just throw things in them to make the cake a lot better than it was. Um, and then after I moved to LA, um, I got a job at this content creation place, um, but it wasn't creating content that I like. During the pandemic, I realized that it was time for me to move on, and I started Practical Peculiarities, which is my DIY and food page. So one of my favorite spaces is this kitchen area. I do all of my videos here on TikTok and Instagram. Um, but yeah, in this space, I really get into my muse. I have an obsession with copper, as you can see, but sometimes I have to contain myself. There's even some store here that I have, I have absolutely nowhere to put, but it's copper and I love it. This is a vintage pastry table. I can just feel all the years of baking on this thing every time I'm prepping something, and that's what I love about it. I love all of my kitchen tools. I try to make sure that they're all vintage because I find that vintage things hold up a lot longer. Look at that, sturdy, it's not going anywhere. It's not gonna break. So most of the house so far has been dark and moody, but there is one place in this whole house that is quite the opposite. My favorite spot in the house is my kitchen area. I spend a lot of time in there because I'm a peculiar baker. It's such a dramatic difference, but I live for the drama. I love it. Um, this countertop was one of those very ugly marble ones and I just hated it. Uh, so my partner and I got this textured contact paper and we put it on just to make it feel wood-like, very cottagey. A reoccurring theme in this place is the closer you look, the weirder it gets. So if you look closer into the plants, you'll find things like little eyeballs. Even in the fruit bowl, you'll find little eyeballs. And that's just like a thing that I like to put around the house just to remember that it's creepy 365 days of the year. And that's okay, we love it. Part of my background is in theater and I used to do a lot of set design. I included that into my space by um, finding budget-friendly tips that are also temporary since this is a rental. This floor uh, is a pill and stick floor but it's not on the tile directly. We laid down a brown piece of paper and we taped the seams with painter's tape and then we put the pill and stick. That way, if we ever move out, we could just pill up the whole floor and nothing's damaged. But right now it just looks like it's built in, which is great. Another thing you can do is add fixtures. So we replace the fixtures, also the light fixtures. It never hurts to ask your landlord to make some changes in the rental space. Usually they say that you can just 
paint it back when you move out. Usually they're a lot more lenient than, than you'd think. If you're making improvements to the apartments, they're usually on board with that. So this fridge did not come with the place. Um, a fridge did come with the place, but that fridge broke. And when that fridge broke, I called the landlord and asked if I could pick the fridge. And this is the fridge that I got to pick out. So if you uh, ask and put on your puppy dog face, anything's possible. When people walk in, I'd like them to feel like they've walked into another world, like a fantasy world, um, like an enchanted forest, or like I said before, the halls of Dorian Gray's house or something. If I could describe my home in three words, it would be moody, magical, and creative. All right, that's it. Thank you for joining me in my peculiar home. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Handmade for more home tours.